You are inclinable in bed. Repeat. Ora. You are incredible in bed. Hi. So, you remember when- Oh, the lighting on this is not great. So, you remember the year before when I kind of cheated and instead of picking an anime moment to highlight, I picked an anime character and just kind of everything that that character did? Well, buckle up because we're doing it again. Today's moment uh, number seven, I believe it is, it comes from Assassination Classroom. Koro Sensei, I. What do you. What do you. What do you want from me? You've, if you've seen the show, I don't have to explain anything about this. For those of you that maybe haven't seen it, maybe a little more justification is required. So Assassination Classroom is about an alien squid, maybe? It's kind of a gray area. He come, he just shows up, he, first of all he blows up the moon, then he shows up at this school and says, I want to enlist as one of your guys' teachers, and if you guys can assassinate me before the school year is over, I won't destroy the earth. Because I'll, I'll be, I've been assassinated. Like I, it, it's kind of implied that way. But if you cannot assassinate me by then, I'm gonna, just gonna destroy the planet. He moves at Mach 20. He's immune to conventional weapons and things like that. He has, yet they have to use special ammunition that he gives to his students. Yeah, he actually is challenging his students to assassinate him. Um, and it's a cash prize too, just to make things interesting. So it definitely asks a lot of you. Uh, you're expected to buy into a lot, and I mean a lot of stupid bullshit to enjoy this show. But if you can, it is an enjoyable show. The probably the it has some tonal problems. The tone definitely it doesn't go like this so much as it goes like this in like sharp angles. <laughs> It's other kind of defining weakness is that none of the students or any of the human characters, with the exception of uh, the FBI agent that's assigned to them, with the exception of him, none of the other human characters are even approaching the concept of dynamic. They're very two-dimensional, they're very... paid by numbers is probably the best way to put them. Except for Koro-sensei. He... it's pretty much the Koro-sensei show. The main reason you keep coming back to it is for him. He's this walking juxtaposition of disgusting, weird, alienating creature that is very polite and generous and thoughtful and forward-thinking and actually has a strong moral standing in the importance of education in general in a student and children's life. But, I mean, again, you wouldn't expect that from a giant weird alien, from this face, from this thing. So, just the entire, just the, the execution of the character, the performance from the voice actor, everything that he does, some of my favorite moments that he does, if I was going to actually pick moments, some of my favorite moments were um, his uh, sort of showdown with the weirdos that just kind of, sh that, you know, come to the school saying they're his brother and then just like, Fucking him up. Um, I liked the gang fight in episode 7. I liked when he was messing around with the sniper in episode 8. I liked the um, I liked the pool scene from episode 14. End of episode 1 is pretty strong. End of episode 1 uh, is a good example of the tone shift that I was talking about, but it also kind of incorporates Koro Sensei into that. So it, it, it's executed a little bit easier with better results. But um, yeah, it's it's a decent show, but the strength of it really is Koto Sensei. There isn't really too much of a reason to watch it other than that, because the other character is just kind of. Eh. Um, but yeah, that is my number seven for today. Uh, I'm glad that you stuck around for my dumb video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh shit, I forgot to turn off.